You're listening to the Weekend Sport Podcast with Jason Pine from Newstalk ZB. Final of Euro 2024, 7 o'clock tomorrow morning, New Zealand time, England v Spain in Berlin. Dominic Fifield is commissioning editor at The Athletic Football and hugely experienced sports writer. He joins us to preview this one. Dom, are you in any way able to succinctly sum up England's run to the final? <laughs> Um, well, started slowly and have been improving steadily along the way, but, but with some some good fortune as well, admittedly. But but belief is is growing. I mean, look, it's they weren't impressive in the group. We know that Serbia they beat Denmark. They were lucky to to get the draw against um, Slovakia. Slovenia at that point, where that was a goalless draw, and it was pretty turgid stuff. Um, but then. You take the Slovakia game in the last 16 when, you know, when, when you equalise in the 95th minute with a bicycle kick uh, from Duke Bellingham and then score again earlier in extra time, you start wondering whether your name's on the trophy and whether luck's going to turn to you this, this time. And then with the Swiss, likewise, going behind late on, um, equalising with a fantastic goal from, from Bakaya Saka um, and, and then prevailing really in the penalty shootout. And I have to say that's the first time in my my life and I'm almost 50 where I've seen England going into a penalty shootout and I've been utterly convinced that England were going to prevail. They were going to win that penalty shootout. And, and I think that it's, it's little things like that, that actually demonstrate the Gareth Southgate effect over this last uh, six years at the, at the helm or eight, eight years at the helm. Sorry. Um, it's really since the Russian w- world cup in 2018, there's, there's a belief that they're getting better. They're, there's, there's a there's a depth of quality, and I think we'll we'll go into this final tomorrow. Not not favourites, not favourites, but with a very good chance of of finally ending that drought. If they are to do that, which England players are most important? Well, that's a, that's a really good question because I think instinctively you, you say Phil Foden and Jude Bellingham, but actually I, they've only fired in fits and starts in this tournament. Um, I thought Foden was excellent uh, in, the, in the last game in the semi-final. Um, played really, really well against the Dutch in the first half, and then and then came off midway through the second half. Uh, Bellingham has has come up with some timely moments, but uh, <laughs> I think he's actually he he hasn't quite looked at his best. And I think you could probably argue he hasn't looked at his best at club level either, really, since the turn of the year. So maybe that's a, a fatigue factor after a massive, massive year in his career. Um, but if I was to pinpoint players that have to thrive, I, the, the key to beating Spain, I'm sure, is disrupting that midfield. Is is it's stopping from Rodri from dictating the play and uh, making sure that the partnership in there is, is 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 not working as it has been so so brilliantly. Because if you, if you disrupt Rodri, then their danger men up front, Yamal, Williams, um, I, I, Elma, they 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 won't get the ball. They they won't be able to, to to find the space to hurt England so in that respect I would say that Declan Rice has to has to be at his swarming best he has to he's run more than anybody else at this tournament but he's going to have another really really busy night in Berlin I think Kobe Mainu has, has, has got to be all over that midfield he's got to dominate and and whoever joins in that midfield from the back, whether that be John Stones, Mark Gay, or one of the fullbacks, Kyle Walker, pushing in Kieran Trippier, whoever plays, they've just got to they've just got to prevail there. They've got to hold sway in the middle because if they do that, they have a chance because they will stop Spain playing. And maybe, maybe some of their own individual talents up top, Foden, Bellingham, Kane, Saka, will come to the fore and and hurt them. How big a threat do Spain? present oh you only have to look at their performances over over the tournament they won all their games no one's ever done that before at euros if they're going through the entire tournament winning every match um they've got a i think he's 17 now yamal isn't he he's he's just turned 17 but Mm. my word he plays like he's been playing for for years The, the kid is is quality he's he's providing chances he scored a wonderful wonderful goal um against the, the, the french um he's he's a he's a real talent at barcelona and and and, and illuminating this tournament 
Danny Olmo, I think, has been excellent in in that number ten role. He's he's come up with three goals himself. He's up there with the Golden Boot, potentially with Harry Kane and numerous others. Since UEFA strangely changed the rules overnight on that one, um, but and and Nico Williams is is just he's lightning quick. So they've got they've got a, an attacking threat and a depth as well. I think they they probably lack a, a world class centre forward. Um, which is probably cue now for Avaro Morata to score a hat trick in the final. But, <laughs> but I mean, I think if England, England will hope that the Avaro Morata that, that leads the line for Spain is the Avaro Morata that, that that underwhelmed at Chelsea, um, as opposed to the, the the player that actually has got a decent goals per game record in most of the leagues he's played in, apart from the Premier League. Um, I think that they're, they're slightly short there, and I think. If you can disrupt Rodri, I mean, Manu did a wonderful job doing that in the, the FA Cup final at the end of the season for Manchester United against Manchester City. So th- there is a bit of previous there. There is some hope. You look at the the quality and, and logic says that Spain should win it. But actually, I just feel there's this build-up of belief around England. And and I think they've they've learned their experience from from losing three years ago in the final to Italy. We have to remember that Spain haven't been in a major final for 12 years. It's quite a long time. Um, for for, a, for a, a, a squad, a, a nation of that such football talent, and maybe maybe that experience can help England. Maybe that maybe they can call upon that. I think they they really have been summoning that to get through the tighter moments of the tournament so far, and they're going to need to do that again in Berlin on the on the final evening. Dom, do we have any clarity about England manager Gareth Southgate's future beyond this match, win or lose? Well, not really. Before the tournament began, he said that he, he intimated that if, if England won the tournament, he would probably step aside. Um, his contract expires at the end of this year, calendar year. Um, the FA have since, a few stories were written this week suggesting that the FA would, would definitely go to him and, and try and persuade him to stay on, uh, regardless of the result in Berlin. And I think there's a logic to that. I think it's it's really strange. I mean, the perception of Southgate has shifted again. I think there were periods in this in this tournament, uh, not least when he was being people were pelting him with with empty beer glasses, uh, plastic beer glasses, it should be said. Uh, again, after Slovenia and then the goalless draw, and it was it was fairly ugly. Um, that, that I think people were felt that he would have the handbrake on the team. The, the, the talents that we see thriving in the Premier League each week weren't being able to express themselves. They didn't like the se- selections. Um, they, they, they thought there was a bit of blind faith with, with people like Kane who, who didn't appear to be functioning at full throttle. And that's, th- there was a period where it was getting a bit dicey. And I think England went into proper siege mentality mode at that, at that stage, started suggesting that the world was against them. And it, and it worked for them. That, that sort of seemed to get them through that, to shrug themselves awake and, and, and get back into some kind of rhythm in the, in the tournament. Um, but I think that would have hurt Southgate hearing that and, and seeing that amongst the, the supporters, the media, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't worry so much about the media. I don't think, um, but actually the groundswell now is he's been vindicated. I mean, everything he's done in the last few games has come off the substitutions he's made, the timing of them, the way that they prepared for penalties, the unity within the group and the squad and the fact that people seem to be getting behind him and, and backing him and they are getting results. And he is the only England manager that has taken England to two, major finals and and you know and three he's reached three semi-finals in four major tournaments in charge and the other was a quarter in Qatar and it, you actually look at his record and it's it's amazing it's brilliant I mean it's tournament football at his best he's the bloke has got so much experience as a player and as a manager in tournaments he just knows how to find a way through the next thing he's got to do is win one and if he does then he'll have a choice I think there'll be a real clamour for him to stay on for the the 2026 World Cup in in the United States, Mexico, and Canada, um, I think that people will want to see him in charge. And you know, it's but he may look at it and think, well, what more can I do? I've won us a trophy, and I've got an impeccable record. Maybe now is the time. Maybe my my his stock will be high at that point, and he might be able to get a club job, or might just be able to to go off into the sunset a happy man. I I, I think he's been wonderful for England, wonderful in in the context of taking up the reins in 2016 in very difficult circumstances with the national team at a very low ebb 
But if you look in the last eight years as to what has happened in the world, let alone in just in England, what he's navigated, what the sort of sense of reassurance that he's provided with the way he has spoken, or the way he has behaved, or the way he has coached the team and the success he's gleaned from the team at a time when we've gone through COVID, we've gone through political upheaval in the, in this country and disenchantment, that's you know societal problems. Gareth Southgate's actually been a source of reassurance for us all. And I think we will properly miss him if he goes. He is, he's been that significant. I'd be very surprised if he doesn't end this tournament with a knighthood, at the very, very least. Wonderful to get your analysis, Dom. Thanks so much for joining us across New Zealand, mate. Hope the game goes the way you and your countrymen and women hope it does. Uh, and uh, look forward to catching up again sometime soon. I just hope it goes better than the rugby guy. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> Cheers, all the best. <laughs> That's top. Yeah, well, for your sake, I hope it does go better than the rugby. Seven and a half away from three. Dominic Fifield out of The Athletic in the UK. For more from Weekend Sport with Jason Pine, listen live to News Talk ZB weekends from midday or follow the podcast on iHeartRadio.